I think with pacing, it's tricky. Like, I give my biggest piece of advice would be going slower in the beginning is so critical for new first time ultra runners. Like, when you've had experience, you can push the envelope. And for the more experienced crowd, you might need to maybe push in the earlier stages. But in general, people tend to just go too fast in the beginning, and it really comes back to bite them. Um, so if you're going too hard in the beginning and you're not fueling, you're just creating a, a disaster waiting to happen later, like your stomach going south because you're not getting enough fluids and electrolytes. So um, with pacing, really hold back in those first you know, 10 miles of a 50K, first 20 miles of a 50 miler. Like, I think the tendency can be just to like, really, it'll feel too slow often sometimes. And I think that's, that's important, yeah. <laughs>so a lot of my runs i do on feel like in training not yeah. on pace except for when at the moment i'm training for a marathon so that's very different because it's space pace specific but really getting to know your body and what feels easy and what feels hard and if you don't know maybe find someone in a race at the beginning of an ultra and just have a little chat to them ask them where they're from and what their name is because if you can talk to them you're probably going at the right pace if you can't tell them what your name is, you need to slow down. Yeah, that is, that's a really good advice, yeah. Um, and then, like, what should you not do pacing-wise then? Probably the thing that I do in every single ultra, where I go till you blow and go as fast as you can until you die. Um, <laughs> you think I would have learned, but I haven't. Um, so, yeah, just... I've done races, I get a bit too excited at the beginning and go too hard, and I know that is really difficult. But if you find, like me, that you do go too hard at the start, maybe start at the back and actually spend that time weaving through people because it will just slow you down and it will mean that you finish stronger at the end of the race. Yeah, that's a really good tactic. How important is it to pace yourself nutritionally? Because when we say about pacing, people always think about the speed that they're going to go and the effort that they're going to put in. But what about the nutrition side and the hydration side to pacing? The thing that people often make a mistake on is they don't start nutrition early enough. Uh -huh. So I think people have it in their mind that it's, it's kind of all over the textbooks that, you know, you've got enough fuel in your body for about 90 minutes, 90 to 120 minutes. So people think, oh, well, I don't need to take any fuel on until that point. Well, no, because then you're empty. Right, so the, the, the big do is start your nutrition early. Um, I usually say, st if you know you're gonna be out for several hours, start the nutrition in the first 20 to 30 minutes, and then kind of keep taking something on every sort of 30, 45 minutes or so. We're not talking a whole hamburger, are we? Just a couple of jelly baby yeah, type things. totally. So the average, we sort of talk about 30 to 60 grams of carbs an hour for the first three hours. But if you're doing a longer race, and I'd be sort of take, trying to take about 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour yeah. um, and, and just keeping on top of that. And how do you know what is 30 to 60 grams of carbs? So the average gel is about 20 to 25 grams of carbs. Um, the average one jelly baby is about 5 grams of carbs. Like a banana is about 25 grams of carbs. So you, you can start to get a feel. Sort of a sports drink, for example, would be probably around 30 grams of carbs. So, you can see you're probably looking at one gel, a sports drink, and maybe six or seven jelly babies, roughly, to get that 90 grams of carbs that you're looking for. Or if you're looking at food, then you know it might be that you're having a banana, a bagel, you know, like a, like a mini bagel or half a bagel or something, and then some sweets as well. So you kind of get a feel for what you need. It's a common thing, but don't go out too fast. I know it's really hard and everyone does it, but it's, yeah, it's so much better to be stronger in the second half of the race in ter like, rather than the first half. In terms of your, like, mentally and stuff, to be strong in that second half. So, yeah, like, really hold, rein yourself in in, in in the first half and then just smash the second half it, it's so simple advice and it's advice that even, like i myself don't listen to but it is really the just the most important thing in, in an ultra because you can make up so much time in the in the last half if you've been sensible in the first half and if you haven't been sensible you're in trouble in the second half uh, so. For me, I try not to get carried away with people going off really fast. I know 
roughly, again, it's like I said before, a marathon's different. You know what you're going to do. You know your split times. Preferably, that's what you're going to stick to with them. Ultra or 100 miler, you don't even know if you're going to finish. So you need to be running definitely within yourself when you set off. Um, I have a game plan, so I, I try and I know roughly where I want to be at certain checkpoints. I know I'm not going to negative split this. I am going to get slower. Um, so you need to take that in, in, into your mind. And also, how long are you going to spend at checkpoints? Because some people like to spend a long time. Some people like to be in and out. But you need to make sure that you're sorted yourself out at the checkpoint before you leave. Because it might be a long time before you see your crew again or someone else. Again, it all depends on the type of race and the train you're on. Um, so pacing, whatever you do, I think if you're running a 100 mile, if you're running and you feel that you can't really talk or say very much in the first hour or so, you're going too fast. Um, some people like to use heart rate, it's another great thing, um, but I think it's all about knowing how you feel. So when, it, when I turned up on the Marathon de Saab, um, I think, not feeling sorry for myself or anything like that, but I looked at everyone else as being very different to me, okay? So everyone's like able-bodied or whatever, and I was thinking, oh crikey, when that race goes tomorrow, when we start, everyone's going to be over the horizon and gone and you're doing pretty much a marathon a day, right? And I don't want to be last, and I don't want to come in out of time, I don't want to get binned, you know, all this sort of stuff, and psychologically that plays on your mind. But then I got to the start of the race, and uh, I was doing it with a friend of mine, um, and literally, when, when this had go, you had the front runners obviously going for it, and then you had the intermediates going for it, and all these people were taking off, right? And I'm looking at my mate going, the hell's going on like i don't think we can't keep at this pace that's insane and um my mate is a steady pair of hands he said look he goes wait he goes wait and genuinely what happened was the front runners like the moroccans and that that are going to win ultimately that race they do their thing right everyone else has massively misjudged it or a lot of people misjudged it come the afternoon where you're going at the same pace yeah which ain't slow but you're now coming up to those people and those people are saying, have you got any water? I've run out of water. They're hydrated. This is day one. And they've massively over-egged it. So they're now in recovery. They're trying to recover that day, which you're not going to do. And they're struggling for the next few days. And that's something that stayed with me on the next one as well. I was like, no, 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 I've seen this before. Yeah. And don't do it. Don't go first. If anything, my advice would be go slower than you think you should be going on, on the first day on the first hour, and just find your bearings. Don't go with everyone else, just do your thing. You've trained for six months, a month, two months, whatever it is. You just trust what you've done and go your pace. Don't go anyone else's pace. Um, because ultimately, the people that, that get around it and enjoy it are the ones that do their own pace all the way around, steady wins, and, and it's amazing to see at the end. So yeah, I would say just do your thing and uh, don't, don't, don't be intimidated by other people's paces. Subscribe free on YouTube and follow me on Instagram for more gear tests and training advice. I also have a book out too for everything you need to know about trail running in one handy package, including more gear advice, nutrition tips, recipes, ways to beat injury, and training plans from 10K to 50K. Check it out here.